we draw strength from our power source. And who is our power source? God. Sometimes you feel so weak, even physically too, you know. Mentally drained, spiritually down. But as we pray, we find we start to pull from God because God can become tired. And as I said earlier, we need to remember that prayer is communication. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, hallelujah. Whatever we do, Satan always presents himself. Don't you think he's afraid of prayer? Yeah? And he's called a hinderer. He can let you become so busy that although you plan to pray, you don't pray. Has it ever happened to you? Or you fall asleep? And talk foolishness. Lord help me. Hallelujah. That's why I always say the word to sleep. God sleep. And then find another time to pray. Places you should go that you could be blessed. He hinders you. And then you hear there was such a nice service. Or there was so and so. You know. He steals your blessing. And he will destroy the work of God within us. He does all of that, prevents you from praying and so on. Let's see what Ephesians 6, 13 to 17 says. Beautiful scripture, we all know it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. So, we are told to take on the whole armor. Praise the Lord Jesus. Every piece of it. Whether it is weighty or not, you take on the whole armor of God. Now, 2 Corinthians speaks of bringing into captivity every thought. Because you lead out to pray and you remember that you didn't pay, pay your partner. You didn't sign out when you were leaving work. Those little things, you know, and mess up your thoughts right there and then. Lord Jesus, you should take something out of the fridge for tomorrow and you didn't. Everything, everything. So we have got to learn to, to bride all of that. The scripture says, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verses 4 and 5. Then again in six, chapter 6 of Ephesians, verse 18, it tells us praying always. Hmm? That should be our position. Amen. Praying always. You don't, go, you don't go around with your hands clasped and your eyes closed because the Bible says you have to pray always. Yes, but whatever you do, there can be like a gaps, let me call it that, where you can whisper a prayer. Praise the Lord. And, and that's different from when you set out to pray, you're praying always. Dealing with somebody and in your heart, you are praying. You know, I have been thinking about something and I've decided, you know, I'm just going to pray about this thing. Amen. And every now and then, I, I, I say something to the Lord about that particular concern that I have. Pray without ceasing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Through prayer, God uses ordinary people. Ordinary people like you and me to do extraordinary things. Amen. Can you think of any? Let's turn to James 5 and verse 17. 
Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Amen. Ordinary man. Hallelujah. But what he did, he prayed that it would not rain. And it did not rain for how long? Three years and six months. Can you imagine that? Amen. Now we know that he prayed again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. They said, like passion, ordinary people. So if he could do it, we can do it. Can we get together and really pray that God sends us a revival? Hallelujah. You know, my heart was blessed today. It was a special place. And I saw two men. One sort of young and another one old. And they kept, they kept looking at me. And it was so much that I touched my sister and was about to speak. The person said, Sister Brissett. And I said, I knew there was something about you. And right there, standing there, were persons that God saved right here. Came from just up the road. I didn't even remember them right now. I don't remember their names. And the lady said to me, when Brother McCoy got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Ghost the same night. Amen. And she said something else which I will not mention now. But it was so nice to know that they were still in the church of the living God. They came from just up the road there. I didn't remember them. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so, you know, God moves when we pray. Hallelujah. Some people call themselves prayer warrior. I don't know what that means. Amen. But you don't have to be a prayer warrior for God to answer your prayer. Thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And he shall seek me and find me. When he shall seek for me with all of your heart. Hallelujah. And I love that. Help me, Lord, to seek you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now this portion of what we are studying is thus short. I have, I have condensed it. But it's reminding us that Prayer is a part of worship. And if you really go into praying, you know that you, you spend some time reading the word. You spend time in singing, in meditating. But you don't have to set out yourself, this time is for this. This time is for this. It becomes too rigid. You go as you are led. And sometimes you just ball out. You have a ball out yet? To God? You just ball out. I remember I had a problem. And every now and then it would plague me. And I was at work this day. And you know where maternity ward is. And it was like a private room. I don't ever still have it. And sometimes you were alone there, you know. And I was at the desk. And this thing just like it would just sweep me away. And I remember I ran into the room. And said, Lord of mercy. A desperate cry. And all the pretty prayers I used to pray, you know. Did not bring me relief. Hallelujah. But that day, that desperate cry was heard by the Lord. And it was something serious, you know. It was a serious issue I had. Honestly to God. It was a serious issue which I... I won't say no because I don't want people to get the wrong ideas. But I had to cry that desperate cry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We are moving on to praise in worship. Hallelujah. Praise in worship. Yes. 
as we read the Bible, we should have noticed many examples of songs. Praise the Lord. And the most times are songs of praise. Hallelujah. You just read them and say they are psalms. But most of those psalms were songs. You just say Asap, he was the musician, you know, that, that David would give all these things to. And he would put them to music because he was also a musician. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Moses, he recorded in Exodus 15 a song about the victory that God gave him in their deliverance from Egypt. Let, let us read that. Verse 1. Exodus 15 verse 1. The song, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he had thrown into the sea. Okay. We know it's more than that, but he made the song right on the spot Amen. when God delivered him. Amen. And people joined in. It was a time to celebrate. Amen. Oh, glory to God Almighty. Yes. And sometimes God still anoints his church with, with this kind of praise and, and worship. Hallelujah. God delivered them. When you think about it, God opened the Red Sea and the Bible said there was dry land. Hallelujah. The waters made heat on both sides. Israel went through. And then the enemy tried the same thing. And we know what happened. That's why I said the horse and its rider and all of those. Amen? Yes. And so Moses sang. And who joined in? Everybody. But Miriam was out there leading because she was a leader. There are many people who don't want to acknowledge that Miriam was a leader. And she was also a prophetess. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So Moses and the children of Israel sang unto the Lord. We are going to look at verse 20 of the same scripture. And Miriam the prophetess the sister of Aaron took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Thank you. So she acted as a leader. She gave the cue. Hallelujah. Women used to play an active role. Praise the Lord Jesus. And, and so they joined with the timbrel and they really worshipped. Thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes in church I see there's a special anointing, say, on somebody and that person steps out. And it's like you're a one-man show out there. Nobody else is stirred. Nobody else is moved. But I visited a church in another country many, many years ago. And there was a precious African brother in the service that Sunday morning. And he was demonstrating how they worship in that part of Africa that he came from. He said, once one person steps out, others come out and join in the worship. And so the ladies, they didn't wear hats like us. They wear like yards of cloth, tw tw twirled around. And when the Holy Ghost moved on them, they would just unfurl or unturl their thing. I started dancing. They are waving and dancing. And remember, he wanted to give a practical demonstration. And because, you know, culture is different, 
nobody would step out. And I can't forget, the pastor of that church jumped out and dropped some foot. <laughs> Hallelujah. In praise to the Almighty God. Don't be ashamed to sing and dance in the presence of the Lord. As long as you are doing it in the spirit. Hallelujah. If it's you alone, it's you alone. That's how the Lord blesses you. But you'll feel the anointing and sit there in your seat. Absorbing the anointing in your bones. Amen. When you step out, somebody else will step out. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Glory to God. So they went with their timbrels, man. And the scripture says, after her, with timbrels and dancing. There was a reason to celebrate because God Almighty had delivered them. Hallelujah. I really love the portion I'm, I'm about to mention. And it's drawn from 2 Chronicles 20. Long story. It speaks of Jehoshaphat, a king. Hallelujah. The enemy was just after him, wanted to make war. And he turned to God in his distress. Amen. When he was informed that Moab and Ammon, two nations, with others too, came not for peace, but for war. Bless your name, Lord. Let us turn to verse 5 of Second Chronicles 20. And Verse Jeho five. Yeah, go ahead. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Mm, what he did there? And said, O God, said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? All right, we can stop there. But Amen. the point I want to make is that he prayed. Amen. He stood where? The house of God. Some of us have been neglecting the house of God. Amen. If you're ever passing by, I remember that these doors never used to be locked until we happened to, to have this school here. But if you're passing by, it's good to turn aside. Amen. And pray. Praise the name of the Lord. There's always something to pray about. So I stood in the house of the Lord and prayed. In spite of his distress, he had an attitude of worship. Hallelujah, saints. What stops you from worshiping? Huh? Sometimes you come to church and you're just not worshiping. As we said earlier, Satan set up traps and roadblocks. But we should learn to lay aside all these things and get in the presence of the Lord and worship. Verse 12. Would you like to read that? Same scripture. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful, saints? Yes. Neither do we know what to do. We are at a point where we do not know what to do. But our eyes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Our eyes yes. are upon thee. Yes. Hallelujah. Have you ever reached that point? Something stands before like a mountain. And you really don't know where to turn, what to do. Whether it is indebtedness or other things but God. Hallelujah. They are upon you. They are upon you. Yes. Now, we have to look at verse 13. Because I, I, I have underlined them. Verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones their wives, and their children. My God. It was everybody's business. And that's what I have in my notes. Amen. Amen. 
All Judah, the whole, well, you know, it was a kingdom then. Stood. They stood before the Lord with their little ones, with the babies. Hallelujah. Their wives and their children, the bigger ones. They stood. Sometimes we leave out the children. Oh, God Almighty, help us. But I remember the days when we have all night prayer meeting. Up there, we'll be filled with children. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. That's where they slept through the night while we prayed. We know there are children and they'll fall asleep. Amen. Those who are, I have grown up, fasting time, I would not allow them to go all day. But they had to fast. Oh, glory to God Almighty. This is beautiful. It was everybody's business. And saints of God, we need to have that attitude. When we say fasting is fasting, prayer is prayer, giving is giving. Hallelujah. Everybody taking part. Thank you, Jesus. Train up a child. Finish it. And when he's old. Amen. I bless the name, Lord. I bless the name, Lord. I bless the name, Lord. There was a Levite there, Jehiel. And in my own words, I said that he was anointed in a special way by the Spirit of the Almighty God. Amen. And you know what happened? He got a word from God. When last anybody has ever stood up and given a word from God? This man got a word from God. He said, you will not need to fight in this battle. The battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Verses 14 through 17. Oh, God, we to set ourselves and... As we said earlier, that prayer is the two-way thing, the communication. Let the Lord speak to you. But sometimes we are so easily distracted. Hallelujah. We are not focused as we should. So we are not hearing from the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and um, people should not be a distractor in the church of a living God. How can you be a distractor in God's church? Tell me. Walking up and down is one. Yeah? You can't be a distractor. Well, let me tell you, by the way you dress. By the way you dress, you can be a distractor in the house of God. Think about it. Many, many years ago, I was sitting on a platform. And it took me a long time to sit up there. I used to sit in the congregation. But I was sitting up there, and I saw someone who had not come to church for a long time coming through that door in a long dress with a flounce at the end, sweeping through the church. Picture that. I had to try hard to control myself. You're not going to a wedding or a special party or so. If you get that one, spend some time and alter it. And make it suitable for church. Amen? You become a distractor. Amen? Don't be underdressed or overdressed. The Holy Spirit can teach you even those simple basic things. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't want to be hindrances in the house of God. Or as our brother was saying one time, some people they had peak up like rumpel filled skin. Can be a distractor as well. We have come to worship the Lord. We have come to bow down before our Maker. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord Jesus. Mm. Verse eighteen tells us that Jehoshaphat, having heard that, bowed his head with his face 
to the ground with others, fell before the Lord and worshipped. Hallelujah. He got a word from God. Saints, what is our reaction when we get a word from God? What is our reaction? We just sit down like we are lifeless. We don't lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're talking about worshiping. The Lord has laid it on my heart and I try to obey. And the Lord did fight for them. Read the rest of the story. The Lord did fight for them. So I say today that nothing, and I mean nothing, prevent you from worshiping. And don't eat too much either. And if it's not fasting day, don't come to church hungry. You need energy to worship. Hallelujah. Always tell the choir. Eat your food. You can have energy to worship. Don't tell me you can't get energy when you're hungry. I know better than that. Your belly growling. And, and uh, your head hurting. And, the, and that sort of thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sure I told you before that I used, to, I used to fast every Sunday. Because of the job I had and so on. The Holy Ghost speaks, you know. And the Holy Ghost told me, you think you're fasting? You're only going hungry. As plain as ABC. So you're only going hungry. And not fast on a Sunday if I get a special move to fast on a Sunday. Amen. So be careful. We're not pacifying God. We are worshiping. Remember, God is a spirit. That's our key word. Our, our, our key verse. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So this king bowed his head and worshipped. Amen. Many of the Psalms echo praise to God. We know Psalm 100 very well, what it says. Right. What does Psalm 22, 3 says? Look for it. That was not familiar with you, no. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. You hear where God lives? Inhabits? Where? The praises of Israel. We have become the Israel of God. Hallelujah. So you open your mouth and your heart and you give God the glory and the honor due unto his name. Amen. What about Isaiah 6, 1 to 5? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it to the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes had seen the king, Hallelujah. the Lord of hosts. Glory. He saw the Lord how? High and lifted up. And what filled his house? What is a train? The train? The what? The train that, yeah, behind it. God's train filled the temple. Hallelujah. The very post move. Glory to God Almighty. I don't know if you have ever seen the smoke when God comes down, but I, I think I have seen it twice. Because I remember the night I took off my glasses and was wiping, and other people were wiping their glasses. The mist of God just hovered over the congregation. Glory to God Almighty. He can still do that. Want to praise him and lift him up. Hallelujah. His majesty, man. 
So we are exhorted by Hebrews 13, 15 to 16. To do what? Hebrews 15 to 16. What does it say? But let him therefore, but let him, by him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Thank you. With such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So you do what? You offer the praise. When you come to church? No. Continually. Because it is the fruit of our lips. Amen. It's not the barley and the wheat and the grapes and all of that. But we are offering the fruits of our lips. So we've got to be consecrated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sacrifices of thanksgiving, praise, and worship we offer unto God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I found a little scripture which, which I would like to share. Romans 1 and verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened. Hallelujah. How do you understand that? When they knew God, they did what? Amen. So, unthankfulness can lead to sin. You know God and worship him as God. Amen? I'm trying to see it because that when they knew God, you know God. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts was darkened. So be careful of being unthankful. I will bless the Lord at all times. What are you thankful for? Hmm? Everything. Everything. Amen. Now when you praise the Lord, you know, God is good, thank you, Jesus, and all of that, it leads to worship. Worship is a more inner thing. That, that, than just praise. Hallelujah. But just start to praise him. Let us praise the Lord. And I don't like to drill, but sometimes you have got to do that to get people going. Let us say hallelujah. But, but as for me, if I'm not anointed, I really can't say hallelujah. Glory to God. How it should be said. Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Glory to God Almighty. So praise leads to worship. And one writer says it will take you into the throne room of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Presence of the Almighty. Praise gives God the honor he deserves. And we know that Psalm 101 to 3. Hallelujah. It says good to go to your bed with a praise on your lips and you wake up. You know, you, you get out of your car, you have a prayer. Most of us have that habit. You know, we give God praise before we drive off and all of that. Hallelujah. And that will lead you into something deep. But sometimes you're driving there and if people ever know what is going on in your spirit. Amen. And sometimes you're right even the things that you're thinking about. You shouldn't be writing that, you know. I don't know if it has ever happened to you. Yes, but you find yourselves because that's what is filled up within you. Praise the Lord. Did you know that what you do affects others in a matter of praise? 
You know that? Do you have a scripture for it? And it's, and, and it's in our New Testament, you know. Our worship affects others. And we don't have to show up. I'm a Christian, so I get up at 5 o'clock and I throw open my window and I, I do all sorts of things. You don't have to do that. If the Lord leads you to do it, he knows why. But our worship affects others. Even in church. That's why I feel we should see the unsaved <coughs> beside the saved. Amen? Oh, yes. See the unsaved beside the saved. Amen? Spill over, whatever you want to call it. Amen? But our worship affects others. Think of Paul and Silas. Where were they? At a jail where? In Philippi, wherever. Okay? Now, they decided to worship in prison. And what Acts 2 says about them. Sorry, let me see. Am I quoting the right thing and I'm not even seeing? Find the scripture for me. I didn't get the reference written down for this one. But we know it and we say it otherwise. But other prisoners heard them. Uh, uh, Acts 16.25. Look on that. Acts 16.25. Have you found it? What it says. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. You see? They were singing unto God. But the prisoners heard. You know, it is like when Pentecostals do devotion at schools. It should step out of the natural devotion and go into another realm. A realm of giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. It should be different. Other prisoners heard, so they were affected by what Paul and Silas did. Their personal devotion expanded to include other persons. Paul writing to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 2 said, Ye are our epistles written in our hearts known and read of all men and he was talking about people when somebody look on you something should come from you to that person you know sometimes they just say you look different or something like that but they should see Christ in you but if you're miserable and terrible like everybody else, what kind of message you are sending? Amen. Hallelujah. So Paul said, you are written in our hearts and you are known and you are read. They know you. You see all the unsaved out there, you can't fool them, you know. They know if you are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, I give you thanks. I give you thanks. Imagine how long Mr. Brissett is gone. And when somebody asks you today, where is Mr. Brissett? They just got at this. And they pick up what I was saying. Where he was. And they are still talking about Brother Brissett baptized me. And that sort of thing. Carry a good record. Hallelujah. We don't have to make up anything when you are deceased. It's true. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Matthew 5, 16. In other were words of Jesus. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
Hallelujah. You know, I was meditating today. And the thought came to me that man looks on the outward appearance. But God looks on the heart. So the outward appearance should stay good. Because of that man see. So I'm saying, they cannot see in here. Man can see how you dress, hear how you speak, how you, watch how you relate to people. That's what men see, the outward. So make your outward very impressive by the grace of the Almighty God. Go to work on time and sign, sign the right time too. Thank you, Jesus. Don't bargain down the thing when you know it's worth what it is going for. I'm talking the truth. You know the thing is worth that. But you want to get it for as little as possible. That's not Christian-like. Hallelujah. Men looks on the outward. So let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father. So, what you do help to bring people to God is not just what is said from the pulpit on a Sunday. Amen. Amen. Now, God uses praise to attract sinners. Did I hear that? Hallelujah. You see how praise and worship is very important. Let it be praise and worship unto God. Very, very important. Because the sinners are attracted. Remember the prisoners heard them? Hallelujah. We, God has put us on a main road. And cars should be slowing down, although it's a dangerous corner. Are driving in to see what's happening. It used to happen. It used to happen when other churches in our vicinity had to come up. And I always call it Mr. Brissy Church. What happening up at Mr. Brissy Church? Because the sound of worship and praise rang out from these places. Why can't it happen again? We are too preoccupied with what I don't know. You don't, let, you don't want older ones like me we want the young, vibrant people who have physical stamina to get the spiritual stamina as well and step out and give God the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, make the worship service dynamic, not just a routine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost tell you who to sing this Sunday or next Sunday or when. Not just a routine. If you, when you're anointed, you know, you're in tune with heaven and the non-singer and the sometimes singer become singer. Amen. Glory to God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh? Why can't the whole congregation turn the praise team? Sometimes. Think it is possible? We, let, we need to let the Holy Ghost lead us and, and forget about the, 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 the routine sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, praise, genuine praise, empties you of self. So when you're emptied of self, God fills that vacuum. And takes over. Hallelujah. So it's not just you. It's not just your voice. It is God. I bless your name, Jesus. I bless your name, Jesus. Praise not only work on those who hear you or those you associate with. But praise work on you. Amen. Well, song said, let's forget about ourselves and, and what else. We are here long enough, I think, to recall some testimonies 
So probably you have heard somebody say, when I got up this morning, boy, I felt so sick. I had no strength. But since I come to church and start to sing, my burdens are lifted. Hallelujah. Yes, I came to church down, but now I'm whatever, whatever, whatever. So praise is what we call therapeutic. It changes that spirit within you and, and takes it to another realm. Hmm? Some people, especially now, they are prone to mental illness. Amen. But, but when you start to put God first and lift him up. You just sing a song, lift him up, lift him up. Lift the name of Jesus higher. Remember it? That is manner. Something about the sky. Nobody here knows it. You don't know that one. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But it's a wonderful praise unto the Almighty God. I don't know where it came from a while ago, but it just popped in my spirit that we are to lift him up. Lift him up. Just lift the name of Jesus higher. <laughs> Glory to God Almighty. Come through the door, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Glory to God. In praise, we think positively about God. Not about what God didn't do, but what God can do and is doing. This allows God to draw near and imparts some of himself into us. Amen. We need more of God, but do we have the capacity for God? You know? No room in the inn? <laughs> That's a relevant, relevant story even now. Make room for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise helps us to think less of self and more of God. Praise energizes the burdened soul. Your faith is strengthened and your needs are met. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, praise involves prayer as well. So everything you do is bundled up. But there must be a balance. Balance. Time to sing, time to pray, whatever. Amen. We mix it up in church. Now, circumstances. Let's say circumstances. Should not affect our prayer and our praise. We know if, if we are not careful, those aspects of our lives will be affected by that hindering spirit. Bless the Lord Jesus. We should not be, or we should not allow, let me say, that the adversary to affect our sense of being. That means to think less of ourselves than we should. To feel incapable it's not because of who we are. It's not because of where we went. Amen. But it's because of who God is and how much of God we allow to, to come and to dwell on the inside. Some people come to church and they feel less than. Because they are comparing themselves. You're not less than anybody. And we tell people all the while, our young brothers, if you can't afford, you know, to change clothes and so, one white shirt and one black pants, who can tell you it's the same one? Huh? And you dress and look good. Amen. Preachers used to go to church and they could kneel to pray. Why? Exactly. So when they put cardboard, a man testified that he went somewhere to preach and he actually was wearing his pajamas under his pants. And while he was preaching, his pajama decided to roll down. 
and break below the pants. Pentecost coming for a long, from a long way, you know. Long, long way. But nothing would prevent those people, hallelujah, from going to the house of God. I can tell you my own story in my one. Imagine, I've said it before, a red skirt and a peach blouse. You imagine those going together? And when rain used to fall in Portland. We have all seven days rain and I see the sun, you know. And when the little sun come out, so we move the red skirt for the waist to dry. Because those days they put belting in skirt waist. Uh-huh. But you're going to church and remember what kind of iron you have, you know. You put it at the wood fire or on the coal. Coal is when you're doing the big ironing. But when you're pressing out one piece, you know, catch up coal stove. You put it at the fire and you pick a bunch of dry banana leaf and you go so. And this waste damp. But you're in a church and give glory to God. And you don't feel less than anybody else. Amen. We really forget about ourselves. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. So don't let the devil let you feel less than. Don't compare yourself with others. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God Almighty. Amen. I'm hardly seeing what I'm looking on. So you mix up the prayer with the praise. And there must be a balance. And God is worthy. So lavish praise on him. In singing, focus on the words. And not on the lyrics. Not, not on the rhythm, sorry. Amen? Some of us go for the rhythm. Amen. Allow the spirit to inspire the worship. Read and study the scriptures. The more you know about God, the closer you'll be drawn to him. You know where I think that it is God who breathed in me? It is God who keeps the earth in orbit and all of that. You have got to love that God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. So we are talking about the effects of praise on self. When you really praise God, you think that's about yourself. You know? And you don't see yourself as ugly and all of that. You just see yourself as one of God's beautiful creation. Hallelujah. So praise enhances everything. Everybody looks pretty to you. You know, when you're living for God, you don't have any time to see the ugliness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I don't know where my eyes decide to act up, but I'm going on. Okay. One last sentence on this, and then we have a little quiz. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Train your mind to think about God daily. If not, ju just say to yourself, what did I think about God today? And even jot it down. Yes, it has got to be a formal diary. Amen. But, but put something about God in your mind. And sometimes that thing grows. You're trying to see what that thing becomes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Becomes bigger than you. Becomes bigger than life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we have a chorus please? Sing up everybody. the things he has done. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord. Worship him, everyone. Worship him, worship him for the things he has done. Every knee shall bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, worship him, Hallelujah. everyone. Thank you very much. We should do just that. We said earlier that there are many songs in the Bible. Can you think of any? Where is this found? We mentioned one as well. Remember? Exodus. Moses' song of victory. Moses' song of victory. You can read it for yourselves in Exodus. Let us read Numbers 21, 17, and tell me what you would call it. Numbers 21, verse 17. I'm flipping it around for you. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, and sing ye unto it. What would you call that if you should give it a name? It's a song, didn't the Bible say that? It's Israel's song for water. Amen. He said what? Spring up, oh well? Yes. And that, did, did it say they sang? Right. Hallelujah. I love it. So there was no water. They just went to the place. And what they did? They sang. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. In Deuteronomy 22, 1 to 43, that's a long one. By Moses, they spoke of Israel's history. Amen. We're going to look. Oh, this one is long as well. It was in the book of Judges 5. But you remember the story when Deborah, Bora went to war with Barak. Or some people said Bera. Huh? They sang. We remember that. Yes, they sang. You can look for it in Judges 5. And then in 2 Samuel 22, long story again, this one speaks to David's deliverance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And if we go over to Ezra, we see when the temple was rebuilt, all of those, all of those. But this one should be easy. In the songs of Solomon, the love song of Solomon. Yes, in celebration, whatever. Isaiah 26, read off Isaiah's Prophetic song. That is one verse. Let's look at that one. Isaiah 26 and verse 1. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will be God appoint for walls and bulwarks. So I get the idea that they would just sing unto the Lord. About various things. Amen? And this one is easy. In Luke, Mary's conception of Jesus. And also in Luke, in Zechariah, for a son. And uh, I think we did this one in Acts, Paul and Silas in prison. Amen. 
Revelation also. All the elders sang. Read for yourselves. And also it speaks of 144,000 that in Revelation 14 verse 3. Who sang that? Who? Revelation 14 verse 3. It's not that scripture. Nothing is there about the 144,000. They were the redeemed. Praise the Lord. And then in chapter 15, 3 and 4, not just 144,000, but all the redeemed. So song has been an integral part of your relationship. You want to go beyond worship and say man's relationship with God. And, and let us learn to sing. You know this little song, sing and sing and sing? Night will turn to day if you sing and sing and sing. Yes, we used to sing it at school. Amen. We would have less problems, less mental illnesses, and, and all of that. We can make our own songs. Praise the Lord Jesus. I think long ago in, in our youth services, we used to have those little things. Who can make a song? We'll give like a lead, you know, a thought on something. Who can make a song standing on your feet? For example, about, let's say the roses, rain, Huh? And all of that. And, and it, I always say to people, you can make songs. I know somebody here who, who used to make songs, you know. But it never sounded too right. <laughs> and I mean, go and sing it from the pulpit, you know. Yes. Doing what you can for the Lord. But many people, when, when they write poetry and all of that, they, they, they have it looked at by others. You know, we can fix that, put here and put there and so on. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Lord gives you a song. Take a song. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are going to stop here for this evening. But we are going to go into deeper waters next week. God willing. And we are still on the same topic. Praise the name of the Lord. I think we should have about three more lessons or so. If the Lord so directs us. Anything jumped out at you tonight? Nothing? Okay. You didn't make any notes? Well, a lot of things jumped out at me from I was um, doing this thing. And let me tell you what it is while you are thinking. Amen. It's a word that came to Jehiel about Jehoshaphat. That's what he thought at me. He was just there worshiping with everybody else. And God sent him a word. Hallelujah. Yes. For weeks now, you know, I, I've been thinking about it. Hmm? You, you, and he was a Levite. Anointed by the Spirit. You will not need to fight. Amen. It was no big, magnificent anything. You know, some of us are expecting... Like um, Naaman's servant for the prophet of God to come out and do some magical things. I said, strike his hand all about the place. Not just to say, go to Jordan and dip. So many times the Lord is just dealing with us 
and we just sit there. It's not me. It's somebody else. You know, you know. Amen. But 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 as the servant had said to Nehemiah, so the servant said to Nehemiah, if he had told you to do a great thing, Master, would you have done it? So why won't you do this simple thing? Praise the name of the Lord. You know, a simple thing as the Lord just said to stand. Instead of sitting there, you stand. Or to change your seat or something like that. You don't know why the Lord told you to change your seat. Probably we're going to sit the Lord, going to put somebody there. That the way how you are worshiping will touch that person. But we are looking for these great big things. Let us try to be obedient to the Lord. It might be a simple topic, but the Lord has laid in my heart that we are not just doing what we should in worship. I can't tell you what to do, but I just feel it in my spirit that there's something more. Hallelujah. And if we start to do that something more, things will change. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, that's it for tonight. Thank you for participating. God bless you. Yes, sister. Thank God. Something jumped out at me when we were looking at Exodus 15, verse 3. It says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And I looked at it because, oh, it is referring to God up there as a man. And we know that God is a spirit. So I say, God is a man of war. If God That's ever goes to war as God, I would be sorry for us. <laughs> Amen? And just like how man, I think, would arm himself and, 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 and all of that. So think of it any way I want to think of it. But what God is referred to many, many times as man in the scripture. I think I have that thought written down somewhere to build on it. But I might never use it because I have so much more than I can ever use. And that's a good habit that I do. No matter where I am and I get a thought, I try to write it down and then I read around it. Might be just lying there in my notebook. But I do them annually, year by year. I put 2019, 2020, whatever. Praise the name of the Lord. Any other comment? No? Okay, can we stand please? Hallelujah. 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 We'll sing I love him too much to fail him now. Let's go. Too much to fail him now. To fail him now. Too much. Too much. To break my vow. I promise. For I promised the Lord, the Lord that I, I will make, make it. it. Yes, Lord, I'll somehow. make it. And now I love and him. I love him. Lord, help me to love you more. Much. To fail him now. To fail him now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give you thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Muirhead, can you pray? Closing prayer. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus. Ah. Oh, glory to your name. Touch us again, Jesus. Lord. Touch us again. Ah, mighty God, Touch us again, mighty God. Lord. Touch us again. We Hallelujah. give you thanks tonight, Lord. Jesus. That you have allowed us to be in your presence Hallelujah. to study your Hallelujah. word. Hallelujah. Lord, we are so grateful for this opportunity, my God, because many do not have it. Thanking you, Lord, for the bread that has been broken to us. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for strength. In our past, the Lord God, thank you, God, thank you to impart your words to our hearts, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. like David said, Thy words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I pray, God, that whatever I have been taught tonight will not just fall on soil that will not grow, but it will fall on fruitful, so fertile soil that it will grow up into eternal life. Oh, God. I pray, God, that somebody's mm. life will be affected by what has been taught tonight. It will not go to waste, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, to really put Hallelujah. worship, my God, at the high Lord, place I in our life, my in God. And Hallelujah. Truth. Worship to attract your spirit, attention, Lord. Lord, to take us into your presence. God, I pray that you'll go with us as we leave for several homes, my God. Hallelujah. Strengthen us, be with us, guide and protect, Lord Jesus, and enable us, Lord, to come back another time to worship you. These mercies we ask in your wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord.